straight into the roof of the net. Nice one. Straight down the middle. So a good performance from both teams here today. Hello and welcome to First Sports. I'm Rupa Ramani. Let's get started. Performing under pressure, when the world is watching and there is no time, no rewind, no course correction, just the here and the now. Today on the show, two stories, contrasting stories of clutch performances. One about winning when the chips are down and the other losing it all within moments. One is the story of a seemingly nondescript 32-year-old, not anymore though now, creating the most magical moment in the Indian T20 League. And the other, a fall from a legacy, from being known to perform during the tense moments to now crumbling under it all. What's changed in the Manchester United framework? Where is that winning mentality? And then we always dish out the drama too here. What is sports without a dash of it? We set up the Formula One race at the Suzuka, the Japanese Grand Prix over the weekend. But first, Sports 360. In tennis, former world number one Rafael Nadal has withdrawn from the Monte Carlo Masters. He announced the disheartening update on his social media platform last night, saying he's not ready just yet. Nadal has been struggling since he made that brief comeback early this year. He's not played an ATP Tour event since January. Saudi Arabia has won the bid to host the next three editions of the Women's Tennis Association or the WTA season-ending finale. They offered a record prize money of over $15 million to host the event. Former women tennis players have been against this move since talks began. In football and the Premier League, Liverpool are back on top of the points table. This comes after they beat Sheffield United 3-1 at home. Darwin Nunes gave Liverpool a 1-0 lead in the 17th minute. Alexis McAllister and Cody Gakpo scored in the second half to seal the game. In, and staying with football, more worry for Indian football as they sink further in the latest FIFA rankings. The Blue Tigers currently at their lowest ranking of 121. It came after a heartbreaking 1-2 defeat at the hands of Afghanistan in the World Cup qualifier. And legendary boxer Muhammad Ali's trunks are up for auction. It's the same pair that Ali wore during the 1975 bout against rival Joe Frazier during the final fight of the World Heavyweight Championships. The fight, which was famously called Thriller in Manila. The opening bid is expected to be around $6 million and bids are being accepted till the 12th of April. Now, I know many of you, the lot that stayed on even after Gujarat reduced Punjab to 70-odd for four, chasing a massive 200. And watched Shashank Singh walking into bat would have thought, oh, this bloke again, who even is he? Chasing 200 at the Nar massive Narendra Modi Stadium, this game is in the pocket for Gujarat. I know many of you thought that and you know what, it's okay. Because at least that's any day better than thinking you're going for the right Shashank Singh during the auction, a young 19-year-old from Bengal, and you bid and pick up a 32-year-old instead. Punjab Kings did that, and right after the gavel came down and the words sold to Punjab were announced, they suddenly went through the list and realized this is not the man they wanted. Now, they did well to send out a tweet later and formally welcome Shashank Singh, saying they wanted him only. And Shashank Singh was only too gracious to respond. But yes, right up till this point, there has been there was no further conversation around Shashank Singh, who's just been another name in that Punjab lineup. He walked in last night and struck an unbeaten 61 of 29 deliveries to take Punjab home. Clean hits, few crazy whacks in there, but what a clutch performance. Team in the hole and no real batting stars left to come out. After the winning runs are scored, he continues to charge towards the dugout, pointing the bat to a, at his team, the bunch that has clearly backed him and trusted his potential. He found yet another unlikely ally in an impact player, wait for this, Ashutosh Sharma, who struck a very handy 31 of 17 to take Punjab across a very, very far, near impossible finish line. With this successful run chase, they became the only IPL team to chase down 200 plus scores in a league six times. Incredible, isn't it? What a story. A man who shouldn't have been in the ranks in the first place has become a hero for Punjab. 
And with this win, it's clear Punjab looks like the team that will give title contenders a few headaches and glitches along the way. Now, don't get me wrong, they are a good side, probably yet to really click as well as a, rounded, as a well rounded side just yet. Captain Shikhar Dhawan was all smiles. The camp was obviously stoked. This was a win out of nowhere and against a very, very good side with a very decent bowling attack. Sure, Rashid Khan is a shade of the threat he was before his back injury, but takes away nothing from what Shashank Singh achieved last night. And here's the line that cinched it for me. When asked about what he thought, given the pressure of the situation, the moment, the opposition, the improbability of it all, this is what he says. They are legends of the game. But when I go to bat, I think I am the best. You get experience. Couldn't get a lot of matches before. Here, the owners and coaching staff backed me. I was very confident. Let that thought sink in. Every time I go out to bat, he says, I think I'm the best out there. He says, yes, they are legends. But when I'm out there, it's just me. Anyone out there who thinks you can't make it, this is for you. Here's why this is a special story. Not because he's suddenly India's future prospect. Nope. At 32, maybe that's a little too ambitious. Not improbable though. And not because from here on, Punjab will be the most dangerous side in the league. Not that either. It's great if they do though. But Shashank is a heartwarming story for the ages because of what he represents. The quiet, unassuming journeyman of Indian cricket. There are many out there. And last night, Shashank was a reminder of those very players. Now, Shashank has been around the cricket system for, for years now. At 32, fair to say he would have seen enough. He's been a part of four IPL franchises, Delhi, Rajasthan, Hyderabad and of course now Punjab. He's only played 13 games in the league, if I'm not wrong, parried in just eight of those. Never quite left a mark. Shashank has played around states in domestic cricket too, from the Indian cricket associations of Mumbai to Puducherry to Chhattisgarh. He's been around. And yet that quiet confidence is inspirational. It's a lesson in perseverance, in grit, never giving up and waiting for that moment in the sun. Waiting for something to click and one moment to make all of that that you toiled for so many years worth it. Just one moment to gratify all the hard work, even after decades of silent persistence to then enthrall millions with a knock to remember. That's achievement unlocked. Shashank is that placeholder in cricket now, that symbol for the best part about any venture not being the destination, but the journey itself. Premier League continues to amaze me with every passing day. Not a week has passed and some shocking results are keeping fans on their toes. The title race continues to intensify and it's not just the top half of the points table that is creating a lot of chaos and conversations. Every encounter is producing thrilling results and results that are shaking up the points table. And it's a treat for football fans. A treat for almost all football fans, barring those of Manchester United. Now, it has been nothing but heartbreak for United. It's been a difficult season. Their rivals, Liverpool, Manchester City and Arsenal are competing for the title, while United are struggling to even finish in the top four. And yesterday's match against Chelsea has denied them that prospect even further. Chelsea beat United 4-3 at the Stamford Bridge in London. Given the form Chelsea were in, United were going into this face-off with a slight edge and a golden chance to win and away from home. And that, that's how it seemed for most part of the game. In fact, till the very end, United were up 3-2 against Chelsea. There were minutes into the stoppage time. For the uninitiated, stoppage time is basically the extra time added after the regular 90 minutes to compensate the lost time due to breaks, fouls and other delays. And it was just a minute left for the game to end, United up 3-2. So with just one minute left, Chelsea went on to register a famous comeback. The most ironical end to a Manchester United game, where they were leading 3-2. And a win right there. Now, I say ironical because historically, United have been one of the most dominant sides during stoppage time. Under their legendary manager, Alex Ferguson, United used to score goals during this very phase. And not just one goal. On instances, they have won trophies during stoppage time. The most famous one scripted at the 1999 Champions League final against Bayern Munich. Bayern were leading 1-0 until the 90th minute. And United somehow managed to score two goals in stoppage time to lift the trophy and make history. United were basically kings of stoppage time. So much so that stoppage time used to be called Fergie time. Dedicated to the most successful manager 
Alex Ferguson, the man who defined Manchester United. The popular myth went when United were losing, the referee seemed to add just a few more minutes into that extra time to give United the edge. Of course, I'm referring to the time when Manchester United were beasts, winning games during that phase. United played in the belief that they could do it. Belief amongst players, amongst everyone associated with the United club. That during clutch moments, get that extra burst to take them home. They had the winning mentality, something Ferguson himself acknowledged. Everyone knows we never give in, no matter who plays us. They know they will have to play right to the death. Players have the belief that we can win the matches in stoppage time. It was a mentality that almost was an heirloom that had to be passed on and it did, even after he retired. In fact, they have a better record after the 2013 season, the season that Ferguson left the club. From almost 5% of their goals coming in stoppage time to Ferguson in the Ferguson era to about 7% coming in post that time, post his retirement. And what better example than the Marcus Rashford winner at the Parc des Princes. It was the 2019 Champions League round of 16 game between Manchester United and Paris Saint-Germain. United were losing 2-3 on aggregate and it was Rashford's stoppage time penalty that got them that famous win for United in Paris. So from dominating in that time to conceding goals now in the dying moments of a game, United have surely come a long way away from the glory days. United fans, the players, Eric Ten Hag would be sensing this. Sure, they are not title contenders, but losing their legacy is surely a far bit more bitter pill to swallow. This ought to hurt the club and the fans. Also, this is not the first time United have ended up conceding goals in the Fergie time this season. In United's previous game versus Brentford, the score was nil-nil until the 90 minutes. And United even scored six minutes into the added time, but they failed to hold on to that lead even for three minutes. Brentford equalised in the dying moments of the game and the match ended in a draw. It's now a domino effect and that is spilling over Old Trafford and the sight can't be pretty. They haven't just been dethroned, but the club is struggling on various fronts. They sit sixth in the points table and a Champions League spot is highly unlikely. Ten Hag said so himself. I know it will be very difficult to qualify for Champions League because we are not in a good position. We will keep fighting until the end, but I know we are not in a good position. We have to catch up and I know we have had a lot of problems and I am a realistic man in a competition that is so competitive and the teams are so close in levels to each other. This was the statement Eric Ten Hag made before the Chelsea match. United then were 11 points behind fourth-placed Aston Villa. Not that big of a difference, right? They had to reduce that gap and move to fourth slot for Champions League qualification. And they had nine games to get to that fourth spot and do a massive turnaround. Possible? Sure. But do they seem to believe that it is? Maybe not. Nothing is more stark a reminder of how far away from the goalpost you've come than failing to keep a tradition and that label of tenacity the franchise, the team, the brand Manchester United has been known for. And the transition is rather shocking, from Alex Ferguson saying his players had the belief of scoring at any stage of the game, at any odds, to players now being unable to defend a lead for more than a few minutes, and more so not having the belief that they can. They are more deflated than motivated and Eric Ten Hag himself is bowing do down to the misery. Clearly says the club doesn't have that faith anymore. Forget the manager, even the players look deflated. So before even thinking of competing for titles, United must first bring that mentality back, that will to surmount anything, that fear Fergie charge, which seems to have gone amiss somewhere in the Old Trafford tapestry. From Bahrain to Saudi to Australia, and now the stage is set for the fourth race in Japan Suzuka. The season so far is much in keeping with the racetracks. They've been quick, snappy, but not without its share of drama and chaos. And expect nothing less from all from that in this upcoming Japanese Grand Prix either. Because after the Grand Prix down under, one thing is clear, it won't be a one-sided season for Red Bull. Exciting. So snapshots of what to expect. The controversy surrounding Christian Honor is bound to create ripple effects that will have a bearing on the races. Red Bull's performance and Max Verstappen's season. And the latest episode might dampen it further. Would you believe it if I said Ferrari might just start as favourites in Japan? 
But there would be one man looking to capitalise on Verstappen's worries, and that is Lewis Hamilton. He failed to do so in Australia, but Japan would be his best bet. And amidst all this, there are murmurs of the arrival of a former world champion at Mercedes. We bring you all the drama before the Japanese Grand Prix this weekend. Three out of 24 races are done and dusted, and the excitement around the fourth Grand Prix continues to build. Just weeks ago, fans were looking to a dominant Red Bull at the Australian GP. But that's not how the script unfolded. It was the emergence of Ferrari that took everyone by surprise. Carlo Sainz and Charles Leclerc finished first and second to end the Red Bull monopoly. And so heading into the Japanese Grand Prix, Ferrari looked to be in the driver's seat as far as favourites go. This despite Max Verstappen winning this race over the last two years. Unlike the Bahrain, Saudi and Australian circuits, the Suzuka racetrack is a test for every driver. The race doesn't just favour the pacey cars, but also requires the drivers to negotiate a mix of high, medium and low speed corners. Then there are the straight stretches to race on. And let's not forget the unique figure of eight track layout at Suzuka. The race also comes with its own challenges due to jet lag. Add the prospect of rains, a 96% rain prediction on race day, and you have a grueling Grand Prix on your hands. But what makes it exciting is the crowd support. The fans have been quite active during the race, and they even stay back to watch the drivers and team pack up. It's a mental battle that drivers are pitted against, and the team loaded with the most here is Red Bull. On the track, it was a disappointing car failure that derailed Max Verstappen in Australia. Off it, the Christian Horner case refuses to die down. According to reports, the woman who had accused Red Bull's team principal of inappropriate behaviour is very upset, angry, scared, intimidated and lonely. The same employee who was suspended after Red Bull's inquiry found Horner not guilty and the employee is now determined to take this matter to the Employment Tribunal. Amid all this, Verstappen is tasked with winning the race. If there's anyone who would look to swoop in on the mayhem at Red Bull would be Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton in particular. With Hamilton set to leave Mercedes at the end of the season, there's pressure on making this year the perfect swan song, something which he's failed to do so far. He finished 7th in Bahrain, 9th at Saudi, and in Australia when Verstappen had to retire due to car failure, Hamilton had the best chance to end the string of poor results. But he failed to convert that opportunity. Hamilton's engine failed and he was forced to retire too. But Mercedes seems to be just as busy off the tracks as well. Team principal Toto Wolff expressed his desire to sign Verstappen for the 2025 season. Now there are rumours of Sebastian Vettel being a possible candidate too. I'm speaking to Toto. I don't know if that qualifies as Mercedes, but about other things. I'm talking to a lot of people because I know them, but not very specific. It does cross my mind. I do think about it, but it's not the main thought. And Hamilton threw his two bits here too, saying he backed Sebastian Vettel's candidature. I would love for Seb to come back and I think it would be an amazing option for the team. German driver, multi-world championship winning driver and someone who has amazing values who would continue to take the team forward. I would love it if he came back. Was that Hamilton trying to hint that he would rather not have his biggest rival take up the seat he set to vacate? Either ways, there's enough to keep the Formula 1 fans all hooked for yet another pulsating weekend at the racetracks. Will there be more surprises or will the Red Bull winning script make a comeback? Time for last serve and Paris Olympics is on our doorsteps. French President Emmanuel Macron inaugurated the Aquatic Centre. The $195 million centre will host water polo, diving and swimming competitions. Take a look.
that wraps up first sports this week. I'll of course see you in a couple of days. Do take care and have a great weekend.